Welcome back to John's Films. A viewer wrote in to ask, how do you zoom in and highlight text in a book? This is a simple way to get into Fusion and give it a shot. So let's check it out. Here we are in Fusion. I'm gonna take my clip of a book, and in this case, I just picked one out of a stock footage site that um, has some text on a page because really that's all we need to work with. So now I will look at it and see, I'm gonna take my table, something right around in there, I think I'll just take out, blow it up, show it to us. Now, the first thing I wanna do, I'm actually gonna need two copies of my media in. One that's just gonna sit in the background and then another one that's going to shine through and start to blow up to get bigger than the rest of the text there. So for that, I'll use a duplicate node. To add that duplicate node, I hit shift and spacebar, and then type dupe. Then hit enter, and it adds it into my node graph. Now that I've got my duplicated node, I need to be able to merge it back on top of my first node. Well, we know that that is a merge. So I drag the output from the duplicate and hold shift and drop it on top of media in, and I get an automatic merge node. Well, here's the problem I've got. If I put this on node on viewer two and I put media in on viewer one, they're exactly the same. Somehow I need to make duplicate only the words I wanna cut out. The sample clip that it's getting, it's getting from media in, I'm gonna crop that to be only the words that I care about. And so I've added a crop node right in front of duplicate. So all it gets is, let's say, my table by. Let's do that. So my crop, I'm now going to set the crop up with first the size. I'm gonna drop that way down to where it's about the size of three words. That might be about right. And now I'm gonna take the Y size and uh, drop that down to where it's only the size of one line. That should do it. And now I need to take and shift around until I get the words that I expect to see in the middle of the screen. So that's gonna be something like, and let's see, we'll go up towards the middle. There we go, my table by. That'll work. All right, now I've got, if we think about it, this single item sitting directly on top of that item here in our merge. And you can see, sure enough, there's the rectangle that defines that word. And then here's the, the full view of what's out there. So now I can treat just this area myself and say I wanna put a color corrector in here. So again, shift and spacebar, type color, arrow key down and enter. I now have a color corrector. So I'll make that highlighted yellow. Okay, not bad. That works pretty well. What about that zoom we were talking about, John? Well, shift, space, and then I'm going to use a transform. So T-R-A-N, boom, enter, adds it. The transform, we want to see this thing zoom in like that. But you know what? We got a little more style. So what we're going to do is we're going to keyframe that. I'm going to come back here in my composition timeline. I'm going to start at 15 in. Maybe five in. And I will hit the keyframe on the right. And I'll drag all the way to it's the end. And we'll go up to as big as we're going to want it to get. About right there. Nice. For added touch, I'm going to hit the splines. Choose my size. Select all the points here. And hit F. That allows me to ease in and ease out to it. I can use these file handles to make it bigger, faster, or slower. The ease in and ease out, what it'll do, rather than a linear motion where it just gradually gets bigger, kind of waits for a second and then it ramps up a little bit faster and then it slows down again. So let's watch the effect. Slows down, gets a little bit faster. Obviously it's processing and caching. Here we go. To give you some ideas, I've done a couple more steps to it just to spice it up a touch. The first thing I did was come back to the start and add a shadow. 
You'll notice I've keyframed that so that it turns on around 15 frames, and I get a shadow behind it to really call it out more. The next thing I'm doing is, much like I keyframed the shadow, I'm now going to keyframe the highlight. So I set where I am, turn it on, and now I'll jump ahead a few frames and make it bright yellow. There we go. So now as I get started, it turns yellow, and then it gets a shadow and starts to blow up. This helps to separate it from the page behind it. As always, thanks for watching. Send me ideas if you have a question about how to get something done. And subscribe if you haven't yet. Got a lot of videos coming ahead. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.